Do you love vintage roses? You know, the kind that your grandma might have in her house, in her, on her tablecloth. Um, and do you love collecting pictures of vintage roses or books? Well, as you can see, I do. And this is one of my many vintage floral illustration books that I have as a botanical artist. So today, I am going to paint this rose. Wait, hang on, is it this one? No, not this one. I am going to paint this rose in my own loose watercolor style. And um, I actually already have it here. So this is what we'll be painting and um, we're doing it step by step. I hope you can join me, let's go. All right, so today we are going to paint a rose from this beautiful book, Look to the Rose. It's one of um, the many vintage floral books that I have bought over the years. And I don't know, I just felt like um, rose is so classic. Um, let's pick one, let's pick one. Actually, I, I've been gravitating towards this orangey rose. I don't know what it is about orange. I've never used to really be drawn to orange. I used to be more of a pinky, reddish, more magenta kind of gal. But today we are going to see if I can recreate this in my own style, my own loose floral style. So I'm going to put this up here on my little um, uh, book holder. And I'm gonna show you the supplies that I have today. So for paper, I use a whole bunch of different brands, but I just grabbed this one that I have. It's Stonehenge Aqua Cold Press, um, and it's 300 GSM, 100% cotton. I do like it, it comes in a pad, and um, yeah, it works for me. Uh, for brushes, I am going to use a three quarter flat brush, as well as, um, size six round brush. These two are from Princeton. The brand is Princeton and they are the Heritage series. And I love it because it's a synthetic brush and it's really snappy. And lots of artists use this for uh, floral uh, watercolor. So yeah, this is what I'll be using today. Of course, you need your water. I have two water cups. Some people use one cup for a dirty brush and then dip into the clean, some for cold, some for warm. I don't really have a system, I have two. I just use one till it gets dirty and then I swap to the other one, all right? Of course, I also have my paint. So this is my go-to paint palette. It's got, I think, 42 wells, that's quite a lot. And I have all my different colors. I'll make a video with all my supplies and how I create my palette and things like that for you. But for now, just use whatever paint you have. This is my palette and I'm just going to set it to the side here so you can sort of uh, see me dip in and out. So dipping into my water with my three quarter inch flat brush, I'm going to go for an orangey red I'm going to dip a little bit into my scarlet red and then also my orange. I'm going to start with the big rose here on the right. I'm just going to, just a few, few dabs, okay? Just a few dabs in different direction. I'm going to wash off my brush. So I washed a lot of my paint off and I just have water, dab. And then I'm just going to just drag a little bit of that color into another petal here. So I'm really kind of just working my way around the center of this rose, just glancing at my reference photo. Okay, now I might want to pick another color. So I'll just go into a gamboge, which is like a really warm, dark yellow, and then just creating more petals. Wash off my brush so that it's lighter. Maybe I want to go back and once again get a bit more orange. Have that bleed into this petal here. And uh, yeah, I mean, as you can see, I'm just using the belly of my brush 
to create this organic petal shape. I've started using this flat brush lately because I actually find it a little bit easier to um, be loose and to be uh, less precise because with the rounded pointed brush, things can get a bit, I don't know, too pointy. <laughs> All right, as you can see, I'm just going in and dipping a bit of the wet into the wet areas to create a bit of um, this wet on wet, wet on wet effect. And what I'm noticing is the shape is a bit wonky. So you can always just go in and just reshape your flower. Add a petal here, add a petal there. There's no rules. Mix the color. Don't keep using one color. Don't keep using one value. Change it up to create that interest. All right, so here I'm using a bunch of colors. I have a bit of, let's introduce a bit of pink actually. Yeah, and see how that feels. All right, I'm gonna go for a bit of lightness here. So maybe just a bit of yellow. Just choose whichever yellow you like. Just dipping a bit of yellow into that flower. And then maybe this one here. Okay. So, so far so good. I do like this. All right. Come on in. Let's paint another little flower here. All right. So I'm going to get my orange again and a bit of scarlet red. See, as you can tell, I'm always starting with like a, a deeper value and then meaning like more paint, less water. And then I kind of like shape it with the brush. The beautiful thing about flowers is um, there's no, it's so imperfect and organic that you can't really go wrong. Okay, go back in here to just balance out the two colors. Just be careful at this stage when it's semi-dry, you might create unwanted blooms, but it's all right. Okay, so we've got one big flower here, one small flower there. So I'm not following my uh, reference photo exactly. Um, I'm just changing up because I realized that I didn't put this far enough to the right. So I didn't really have space out here. So I decided to put this one down here. But I think I can put one more flower here and maybe I'll go a bit lighter and just make it sort of like a, a light, a yellowy type rose. Still going to play a bit of my orange. but just a lighter one here. And I'm not even using a reference for this rose because I don't have one. Just going by my feel. There we go. So right now they just look like blobs, perhaps, but that's okay. That is fine. Be trusting in the process. Every painting has a, a, an ugly stage. Okay, actually I'm just gonna go into a bit of my burnt umber. I'm feeling the urge to add a bit of dark in this middle here for now. Don't know if it's gonna work. I was gonna go, whoops. All right, got a bit of brown there too. <sighs> there you go. So we have our three blooms and let's start to add some stems and leaves. All right, so I've changed to my size six round 
and I'm gonna go into my palette to grab some green. So I'm using a bit of sap green. Um, and you can see I've kind of mixed it into my puddle here that's already muddy with all sorts of green and that is totally fine. In fact, it gives it that really nice natural green shade. And uh, you don't need to be so precise about how you want the outcome to be. It's gonna go with the flow. So you, to get the stem out, you just gotta find where that center of the flower is and then just follow it, pull the stem down. Okay, just pull it down from the center of the flower. And I'm gonna give this rose a little bit. Okay, I'm gonna go into a green gold, change up the value a bit, change up the color. Wash my brush off so I can get a bit of water in there. And as you can see, I'm really just making uh, leaf shapes with sort of my, oh, look at that. I made a little splatter of green over there, which is fine. Sometimes when this kind of accidents happen, I just go with it and maybe I'll do a splatter around the whole thing, who knows? Okay, I'm gonna grab a bit of dark green. This is my shadow green here. You can also make a shadow green by adding some purple or violet into your green and that will darken the green up, okay? So, I find this green a bit muddy, so I'm just gonna put more of my sap green, which is a bit more vibrant. Okay, so let's pull a stem from this one, this guy here. All right, so for the leaves, I'm using this size six round. However, I'm feeling like I wanna go back to my, my square, my flat, because that will give me the ability to really get these much larger leaves. You can pull larger stems from the width and the belly of the brush. And I'm generally quite an impatient painter, as in, that's why I like this style, you know? It's loose, it's, it's quick. Um, I like to also play with the leaf colors, so since I've been using a lot of orange for my roses, if you just dab a bit of orange into, the, into your leaves, it gives a bit of harmony and orange with green makes a little bit of a brown which is a very natural leaf color. Alright, so I pulled that one from up there and I realized it's looking a bit odd. An odd angle but it's totally fine. We can balance it out by just adding maybe another stem here. Whoops, that one got a bit away from me. That's okay. Just relax. Go with your intuition of where you feel a leaf should be placed. And if you realize that it's actually not the best place for you to have that leaf, then you know, then you learn. Next time, your body will remember the little details of, of this painting, of where you went, of the whole journey. Okay, so now I'm just stepping back a little bit to just look at the whole composition and just wondering, um, do I need more leaves? All right, I'm looking at my reference photo as well and there were some browner leaves towards the back. So I'm just gonna mix a little bit of that orange into my green here and yeah and then i'm gonna just pull out maybe i'll use the smaller and i'm just gonna put some burnt umber as well pull out some brown leaves right so make the leaves big small light dark um because 
The eyes love to see contrast. We love interest by looking at things that are different and dynamic. So, a bit of brown leaves behind the green and then maybe something even lighter here. So, you can give the illusion of something further away by making it super light. Okay? So I've done that with that bit there. Maybe I will pull out some really light valued leaves just at the back here. Hardly notice them. Just there. Sort of fade it into the background. Alright, so I'm just gonna check. Alright, the first layer is quite dry. Yup. And since it's dry, let's go in with some detail. And with detail, you can choose whatever little smaller brush you like. In fact, you can even do de detail or layer with a bigger brush. But what I enjoy using lately is actually a smaller flat brush, which I can't find right now. Um, yeah, it's okay. I will do it with my, this one. This is a size 8. Nah. Let's do size, let's do size, size 6, okay. You can use the 8, 6, 4. It's my silver black velvet. I like this one because it's actually um, a, a mix between synthetic and natural and um, it's got the smoothest glide to it and I feel like it provides a really nice sort of glidey kind of feel when you layer. Alright, so I'm gonna pull back some orange here. So when we do the next layer, usually we want it a bit darker. So you can darken it by either making it your mixture a little bit, you know, thicker or you can add a contrasting colour like I did, add a bit of green it. All right, so let's do let's do a little bit of shading, and um, you can look at your reference photo, or you can sort of just go by feel, putting the layers of the rose just into where the petals probably fold. It's a natural way. Please put layers. I also sometimes like to have a bit of detail on the edges. And uh, actually, I'm not a big fan of this muddy orange actually. <laughs> it's okay. And you know what? You can even layer with a totally different color if that is what you want to experiment with. So I've just pulled out a magenta, which is not a color we've even introduced here yet. Uh, but I think it's, it's nice to just play around and see, you know, how your work of art can, where it can go. Okay, so, all right, little tighter shot in here to show you the layering bit. Let's do this one. So if you have a painting like this, you don't know which flower to work on, depending on your, whether you're right hand or left hand. If you're right handed, do it here first because you might smudge this flower. So just a little tip for you. So you can have a bit of definition of some of the petals. Using a bit of this darker orange. And like I said, really, there's no rules as to how you need to, where you're gonna put the different colors, the layers. It's just totally up to you how you wanna glaze and you have to play and experiment, okay? Cool, all right, this one is gonna be fun because it's a more orangey one. So I'm just gonna grab my gamboge, which is 
this dark yellow. I'm just going to define the petals a little bit with my brush. And then I'm also going to go in and grab that brown. My brown is a burnt umber, but you can use whatever brown you have. Sepia. I'm going to do that. And maybe because it's already a brownish shade here, just give it a little shadow. I don't know. I really don't know if this will look any good. Just wriggle your brush around and uh, play. Look at paintings that you admire and see whether you can do something that, that works. All right, so I think we're okay with this one. I'm not sure what it looks like. I'm not sure, let's, let's see. All right. Okay, so the, for the final sort of like layer that I think I wanna do is, is actually, I'm probably going to give these leaves some veins and you can use that pointy round brush, the small ones, or if you have a liner brush like I do, some people call it rigger brushes. This is a size one. And I like this one because it can give me really thin lines, like really, really thin lines. So I'm just going to dip it into my green, dark green. I'm just going to pull out some veins. And you just got to... Um, be very light-handed with this. And you don't have to have to sort of like be exact. No, no, you can be exact if you want to, if, you, if that's how you like to paint. But how I do it, how I enjoy doing it is just kind of like rough. Rough lines. You don't even need to do it for all the leaves, just do it for a couple. Maybe do it for the stem here, give that stem a bit of definition. Some can have the little vein, some just can have the middle vein. And I think that's it. So there you have it, the finished painting. I hope you enjoyed painting along with me and I would be so grateful if you could give this video a like if you like it, obviously. Subscribe and leave me a comment if you have any questions or anything you'd like to say. I, my name is Crystal again and um, thanks for coming along on this painting journey with me.